Good morning. I'm Cody Hendrickson. Today we're going to be looking at how we can trace recursion using debug in Java. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, when we're tracing recursion, we've got some questions that we need to be able to answer so we can understand the actual process attached to that. So these are the questions we want to make sure you're able to answer by the uh, time we're done looking at the recursive process. The first thing we want to make sure we can answer is what happens inside the computer when a recursive method is called? We want to be able to understand what's going on when we're doing this. Next, how do we actually examine this process and look at the state? How do we perform the action of debug and look inside what's happening inside a recursive process? Third, what are we looking for? What are we actually paying attention to? What do we need to pay attention to the actual inside the actual debug windows? What's important to understand? Fourth, but not least, what does it look like when something goes wrong with recursion? Because we can use the debug process to actually identify when something is not executing properly, and we can learn to identify what that is by looking at the actual results. So let's go ahead and take a little bit closer look at the actual debug process and go from there. The first thing I want to do is talk about the general process of debug. Now, explicitly I'm using the Eclipse environment to do this, but if you're using a different IDE, JGrasp, IntelliJ, even Replit, there's ways to debug in almost everything. You can even do the old-fashioned debug using just the command line. Whatever tool you're using to do your Java compiling and writing code with, the execution environment you're working with, whatever IDE you have, you can do debug with it. The process here is for Eclipse, like I said, but it will uh, directly cross-apply to whatever IDE of choice that you're working with. So use the features that we're talking about right here, and then you can use how to work with your own system right there. So again, this process is something that it's going to be similar about whatever ID you're working with, but we can go ahead and actually adapt the process and go from there. So let's take a look at the actual uh, what we need to do. So the first thing we have to do when we're doing debugs, we need to make sure we add a breakpoint. Now in Eclipse, all I have to do is actually to double click to the left of the line number. Now you can see over here in that picture on the right hand side that we have a breakpoint indicator right there under that middle section. And that is going to tell the execution environment, aka our IDE, when to stop or pause the execution of our code. And so we do that right there on the line of the actual, what we want to start looking at. After we do that, we're going to use the debug button. It's a cute little bug in Eclipse and other things. It's a, um, a nice little play pause button if you're using, uh, say, VS Code. But there's some great tools to use with that. So you just click the debug button and you press, um, you get into the environment. Once you get inside that debug process, you want to step into the line of execution because we actually want to look inside that. Now, well, there's another video out there we can go into more deep, uh, detailed process on how to do debug itself, but this step into means we're going to look inside that current line of code and see what's inside that. So if we take a look over on the right hand side of the screen right now, we can see the actual debug environment inside Eclipse, we can see what we're working with. The left hand half of the window is the stack trace. That shows all the calls as they're currently in the pile of the stack or execution environment for that current program right there. As you can see in the example right now, I um, had runner line nine, which went to recur controller line 31, which is where I'm pausing and waiting for execution to happen right now. I'm waiting to start the debug process. I have my breakpoint um, indicator right there on line 31 in the middle. And then over on the right, we have the reference to the variables window where we can see what the current state of everything is. So that's the basic structure of how we can look at that and how we can work within the actual debug environment. Let's go take a closer look at what we're going to be doing a lot of the work with specifically. We want to look inside the actual structure of our project. And so we're going to look inside that. We want to make sure we're checking to make sure we're working in the right spot. So we check the stack trace on the left hand side. We want to make sure we're at the right line number, making sure we're actually looking at what we're supposed to be. Now, if you put your breakpoint at the right spot, you're already there. But when you're, say for example, you've been debugging for quite a while, you might lose track of that. So always check that stack trace and see, am I where I think I am? Just before we, work, before we actually do any detailed looks. Um, we are the first call in the recursive method. We want to see if the exam meets the parameter of the base case. And when we first step into it, that's what we're doing because we just started the actual debug process. So it's going to check to see if we're meeting that base case value. And we can look at all those values by looking over in the variables window, which we just had a quick glance of another one. We now have a detailed uh, view over here on the right. So that we have the class variables underneath the this triangle. So if we do the triangle fold down, you can see that we have memoization and view for the data members of this class right here. That um, memoization is an array and view is a pop-up um, instance. And then we have our local variables of response, example, and result. And the response value is the string 15. The example value has 15, the, num, um, the integer. And result is default at zero because we initialized it to be. So we have all class variables right there under the this triangle. We have the local variables below then, and then all the values are in the value column over on the right. So that's this, what we're looking at. We're actually looking at the actual inside the structure. When I do the recursive call, it's going to call the same method over and over and over again. 
We talked about that in our earlier recursion video and you saw that inside your textbook and other information you're working with. But that recursive call gets placed on the stack. So if you look in the little middle part of the stack trace right here on the screen, you can see that I have runner main passing the string array, then I have start, then I have Fibonacci int, Fibonacci int, Fibonacci int, Fibonacci int. So it's recursively calling that method over and over and over and over and over again. And so that stack trace is being built up and it keeps going up to the top of the stack because you can only add to the top of the stack because of the way a stack data structure works. One of the great things you can do, as I say on the uh, left right there, is to keep track of this on a piece of paper using tick marks. It's like, oh, this is where I'm at, this is where I'm at. Or actually uh, keeping track of the current values, like this is the it nth iteration, this is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can keep track of it because having that mental picture on top of the actual picture you see on the screen is a great thing to build. Now, this is also a great thing to practice when you're looking at doing, say, for example, your end of your tests in your um, computer science courses. You will often have to trace recursive solutions, say, for example, in the AP example and multiple choice questions, or maybe in a college class, you have to actually write a recursive solution. So you wanna make sure you're tracking those values appropriately, and that's a great way to do it, is by using a piece of scratch paper and making sure you keep track of that information. Now, if you want to do a debug on that, <clears throat> When you're debugging that, you wanna make sure you keep track of the two different options you have. If you don't care about the actual evaluation, then use the step over um, step. Or if you want to actually look more involved in that, you do use the step into, so actually go and look inside that call. And so using the balance between the step over and step into, step into again gives you the detailed information, step over just executes the line and waits for the next thing to happen. And then when you want to leave to whoever called you, use the step return to jump back out. Again, if you want a little more detailed example of how to do debug, watch the debug video or ask your teacher about more information about this. But that's the basic structure we're working with on that. And so you just step over that process and you can watch for that happening at that recursive call. And so you'll continue to see those recursive calls build on the stack until it reach the base case and then the process should end. If your recursive case is not properly done, if you've actually given it information that's gonna be a problem, uh, we're gonna see something happen where it's gonna, it's gonna give a stack overflow error, it's gonna crash, burn, and die. And so we have the console error up at the top. As you can see right here, we have an exception in thread main, java.lang.staffoverflow um, error. And it has the same line number repeating over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Now, if you see that happening right there, where it's the same line number as the um, linked uh, line of the code where it's causing the crash, that's automatically a good ca um, call that you have had a stack overflow. Or if you don't even read the actual exception, the fact that it's the same line number called, 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 that tells you it's calling the same method over and over again, which is a, a stack overflow, which means that you have a recursive failure. If we look at that tiny little middle section right there, we have a private void stack overflow, it takes an int parameter, and if the parameter is greater than zero, it calls stack overflow. And we look at the value for that parameter is 19. And you can see over there on the left-hand side of my stack trace, it has been calling for quite a while. So I passed it a non-zero parameter, and it kept building and it building and building and building and building because the stack over has a parameter of parameter plus plus, which means it's gonna keep calling itself and it's never gonna end, it's always gonna cause a stack overflow. It's amazing, it's the greatest app ever. So you wanna make sure that you check your uh, base case so you can identify what's wrong with that. And this is how you can see that inside the debug window when you're having that happen. And so you can use that to go back and fix your errors and go back and work with that. So that's the quick thing you can do to make sure it looks like it's wrong. We wanna review some of the terms we talked about today. So the terms we talked about when we're working with debug, we had the step into, step over, step return, the breakpoint, resuming the execution, the state and the value. So step into again is when we actually go into the actual execution. We, we, um, go into and look inside the method, we go into and look inside the call, we go into and look inside that line of code in more detail. Step over, we simply just step over that line and wait for the next line to go in and look into that or choose to step into it or step over again. Step return is when I go over, I leave the line I'm on, I go back to whoever called me, and that's a great way to exit out. The breakpoint is the point at which we stop that. Resume is where I can, if I press the play or pause button, it'll go to the next um, breakpoint inside my code so I can skip past steps instead of stepping over every single one. We have the state, which are the internal values we're looking at, and the values are the things we look at inside there. So again, we want to make sure we answer the questions we talked about earlier. So what happens inside the computer when the cursive uh, method is called? We see that stack trace build, and so all the calls get placed on the stack. How do we examine the process and look at the state? As we step into or step over the lines of code, we look at the values over on the right-hand side, and we can see what's going on inside the actual execution environment. What should we be looking for? We should be looking for the values and stuff that would go onto that. And what's looking is wrong? We have the Stack Overflow exception.